So welcome back to our first carving manoeuvre and we're going to cover the carve jibe. Now, the thing with the carve jibe, it kind of changes each time you take out different equipment. So for example, when I take out my slalom kit, my jibing's a little bit different to when I'm jibing my waveboard or my freestyle wave. Now, most of the technique is exactly the same. The foot movement's the same. Um, what I do in my hands are the same. Maybe what I do in the rig's a little bit different, but not much. Um, the only thing I would say that changes is the actual radius I carve. So on, on a uh, slalom board, I'd have a big drawn out arc because I'm trying to kill the speed and kill the power, not kill the speed, but definitely kill the power. And it's a much bigger arc than I get away with on my wave board. But actually, to be fair, the bigger the arc, the more time you have to think about stuff. And then once you get good, you can start to speed it up. Now the difference on a wave board to a free, uh, a free ride board is exactly the same technique. On a, on a uh, free ride board, you're a bit slower on your feet. On a wave board, you kind of jump around, but it needs to be the right technique. So, we're going to talk about preparation. Now, preparation is pretty much the same for a carved jibe, a duck jibe, you know, anything I do, really. Um, there's a few things that we really important. And the first thing to do, okay, is to make sure it's safe to do anything. So, use your eyes, have a look around. When I'm sailing, I'm always looking upwind and slightly, you know, to the gusts and to the waves or, or to the flat water bit. You know, I need power, so maybe I'm looking for a gust. If I'm too overpowered, maybe I'm looking for a lull. And most importantly, I'm looking for people, okay? If I see someone in front of me, I need to try and predict what he does. If I see someone behind him, I need to know that person's behind me. So have a good look around. So when I'm sailing along, I'm cruising along, I'm having a good look around in front of me where I want to jive and behind me and make sure no one's going to overtake me because if someone's coming down on a broad reach and I jibe, it could be a bad accident. Okay, so your preparation. We've had a good look around. Now your backhand goes down the boom. Now there's an action stance where your backhand, as soon as you unhook and you want to keep power and speed in your sail, your backhand must go probably about three quarters away down the boom. Okay, if it doesn't, as I unhook, what will happen? I can't control that power that I've just lost through my harness and I end up sheeting out, losing my mass at pressure, and the board starts to bounce before I've even done anything, okay? So it's all about, when we have power, is to get our backhand down the boom. As we unhook, you notice that nothing happens to the sail, okay? I keep everything trimmed and keep that board flat. Now, a lot of people, they don't put their backhand down. When they unhook, they do this, okay? That's just gonna upset the board, and before I even enter my turn, the board's trying to throw me off. So, I had a good look around, my backhand goes down the boom, I'm ready to unhook. Now, with the carve jive, there's no right or wrong. Some people prefer to stay hooked in. Normally for me, when it's really windy and it's survival conditions, I'm out in waves, I actually stay hooked in. I take my back foot out first, and then my backhand, then I unhook and go. Now on a free ride board or anything with outboard foot straps or double foot straps at the back, normally what I'd do is I'd sail along, I'd get my backhand down the boom, I'd unhook, drop down, and then take my back foot out and ready to go. Okay, so there's no right or wrong, but where's, where you put your feet is definitely correct and it needs to be the right way. So, my feet at the moment, when my back foot comes out of the foot strap, they go parallel with each other, like we're skiing. Okay, so I can drive both my knees into the turn. Now the key thing here is to have a nice wide stance. If I'm a narrow stance, I'll probably get pulled out the front door being nice and wide will allow me to step round and keep my weight forward. Now the foot change is so important, this is where a lot of people make the mistake and if you ever stall your jibes, because what happens, and it comes back from uh, race boards and really hard rail boards, people need, need to get their weight so far forward to engage that rail to get round the corner that what they end up doing when they do the foot change is they step back, stalling the board, okay, and normally turning them up into wind and throwing them off. Now, with a nice wide stance, I've got good balance. Most importantly, when I do my foot changes, go heel to toe and then step. Now, it's important that that heel replaces where that toe is on the carb drive, so the board has that nice constant, nice curve. Now, if you ever do that funny S in, normally what happens on the feet is you get lazy and you step there, and for a split second when I step forward, where's my weight on the opposite side, the board does this. And that's where you get your funny S in from, from, or one of them, one of the reasons. Right, so that's what's going on with our feet. So again, as I said, it's a personal preference if you uh, unhook first or you take your feet out first. Doesn't really matter too much. Okay, board angle. You wanna be going up into wind, you start your preparation looking around. And then before you don't wanna go into wind and then go straight downwind, bring a nice constant carve 
Okay, so now I bring myself across the wind, get used to that power and speed, and then start my preparation when I'm across the wind. Backhand goes down, I'm gonna unhook, and I'm gonna drop down and hunch up to replace that weight. Now from here, when I take my back foot out, imagine it's like stepping down a step. We're not stepping up, okay? What we're actually gonna do is when we take our back foot out, is actually step down to keep our body weight nice and low. Same when we do our foot change, we're not stepping up, okay? What we're gonna do is actually keep our body weight down. I, can't, I don't know if you can remember in the previous videos that I said it's always much better to fall onto your bum than it is to go out the front door. Cool, so again, good look around. I'm hooked in, flying along. I brought my board across the wind a bit more, picked up a bit more speed, backhand goes down the boom. Now for all you people that sell underhand grip, there's no problem, but for the carve job, you wanna make sure we go overhand. So that's gonna be the start of your preparation. Okay, backhand goes down, I unhook. When I unhook to replace that weight, I'm about to lose my harness there. I hunch up, allow my head to roll between my shoulders, okay, and drop in this position here. Now, if you do your preparation in a good gust, you shouldn't have any change in speed. If you start to slow down, it means you're dropping down like this by squeezing your bum cheeks together and keep that core nice and stiff, you'll keep power and acceleration. Then from here, back foot goes out, comes parallel with the other one, bend on my knees, I'm ready to enter my calf. I bend forward through my front leg and extend my front arm into the turn and keep my backhand sheeted in. This is our carving position. Okay, and then from here, the sail will start to go light. Now, if you don't know that feeling, what will happen, it means that you're not sheeted in at the beginning, so it's probably that backhand, and as you start to accelerate downwind suddenly, the sail will go light, and what will happen is you'll sheet in, go whoa, whoa, and then it'll get ripped out of your hands. Okay, so if that's happening, it means that we need to go back to our preparation. Now, let's get that backhand down, acceleration, back foot comes out, and then when I'm ready, I bend my knees and start to carve. This is our carving position. Now from there, as I open up with my front arm, I bring the rig across the nose of the board, okay? And what do you notice about my arms nice and straight and my back, my body is nice and low, okay? I'm not doing this. At any point with a jibe, you wanna be kind of in line with the boom, okay? At any point, if you're looking over, even if I bend my knees and bend my arms like this, you can see all the weight leaning back, I'm looking over the sail. So keep that sail away from you, okay? and a nice, give yourself a nice distance. Now from here, I wanna be going, always looking for my exit. So as I open up the clue, I open up the clue and I start to look at the end of the boom because that's where I wanna be going. Now from here, I'm ready to do my foot change, the Elvis wiggle. Now, if you guys ever get stuck in that front foot strap, it means what, hap what happens is as you bring the rig up, you bring your body weight up too. So now my weight's pretty even and I find it hard to move my foot. So to change that, as you bring the sail across, lean it to the opposite way, look where you wanna go. Then from here, because my weight's leaning back onto my back foot, I can do what we call the Elvis wiggle. Okay, and you can wiggle your foot all the way heel to toe. Remember what I said about stepping down, step down, and your front foot goes along the center line. Now we're in that clue first position that we've been practicing. Remember, we need that nice wide stance going from our preparation, having that back hand down. And then from here, I'm ready for the rig flip. As the sail drops back, I bring my body weight forward, get hold of the sail, and then we go. Just like that, the calf jive. Okay, key points. Preparation's the key. I'd say probably about 75% of it is preparation. Okay, other key points. Give yourself a nice wide arc. Don't go from upwind to downwind. Go upwind, bring yourself off the wind, get used to that speed, and then go in it on a broad, I'd say like a beam reach to a broad reach. Okay, foot change, heel to toe. You can practice this. You can practice this in the bathroom or anywhere. And it's literally just get a broomstick, open up, and just get used to that heel to toe and step. And then with this tack, we can open up, heel to toe and step. Remember what I said, it's about stepping down a step and not up. Pretty much on the carve jive, the difference is what you do your foot change on a big wide board with you know, like a six, seven, you've got loads of time, you can open up and go, oh, one, two. Okay, on a wave board, it's exactly the same foot movement, but it's like whew, ninja quick. Slice like a ninja cut, like a razor blade. Okay, it's so a ninja quick, um, and that's the only difference of jibing, really, a wave board to a free ride board. You've just got a lot less time, you need to be quick. Um, pretty much it that's it on the calf jive 
go and practice it. Again, remember your funny S in, either you're bringing your head up with a sail, okay, and that'll stop that. To stop that, keep looking at the exit. Okay, that'll stop the first funny S in, and if you get that front foot stuck, and if, when you do your foot change, if you S, just make sure that front foot always comes heel to toe. Remember to bend the knees like a ballerina. Okay, that's the car drive. Hope you enjoyed and good luck. Enjoy. <laughs>